Uh, hello, welcome to Assay TV. Uh, today I'm delighted to be joined by the President and CEO of Candente Copper, uh, Joanne Fries. Uh, Joanne is joining us uh, from her cabin in Whistler today. Uh, Joanne, great to see you. Thank you very much. Very nice to be here. Fantastic. Um, to start us off, I mean, I was I was looking uh, before this interview uh, at your at your company's share price, and I, and I noticed that sort of around about, uh, just before Christmas, I think on Christmas Eve, your share price was down at about ten cents. Uh, today, it's at about uh, twenty four cents. So, so what what happened? Uh, well, I think people started recognizing what we have in the ground and what we have as an asset, and what's going on in the world of copper and green energy and and development that's needed. So a lot of people have been watching us for quite a while. We did have 250 million market cap in 2011 when we first finished our pre-feasibility and updated our resource information. Um, but things got pretty quiet in, in Peru and in, in the copper market and, and for us for various reasons. And um, this past year, people have been paying attention again and starting to pick up shares in the, as I was told, in the nine to 12 cent range. And then tax loss selling stopped on, well, had to stop on the 29th of December and our share price just started moving. Mm. And clearly we have some um, big you know, institutions or high net worth individuals taking positions. Mm. Well, you have a very big project there, uh, the Kanyariako uh, project. Tell, tell us a little bit about some of, the, some of the headline figures there. Sure, it's 10 billion pounds of copper or 9 billion pounds of copper, 2 million ounces of gold and about uh, 50, 54 million ounces of silver. It would have a minimum 22 year mine life. It's economic at 250 copper. I'm just cheating here, look at my NPV chart um, sensitivities. So at 250 copper, we have an NPV of a billion dollars mm -hmm. and an IRR of 17 and a half percent, but at 290, so that's really what we use for the base price of what this project looks good at. Um, but at, at 290 copper, our NPV matches our capex, which is 1.56 billion, and then you get a 21.5% IR, which is pretty good for big projects like this. Having said that, we haven't done any serious studies on a on a potential smaller startup, higher grade startup, and we would like to do that. When we did most of our engineering projects like us were getting sold for 400 to 600 million, so we were in a rush to make sure people understood we were similar to those and just did engineering on the bigger is better attitude. So we think we, we would also have, could have an opportunity for a closer to a 700 million, I'm gonna just say um, CapEx and, and get into production a little faster, but we mm. that's sort of some of the engineering we'd like to do. I mean, as you say, it's, it's a huge project. Um, and, and, and in terms of the, you know, where it stands on the cost curve, how do you yeah. compare with other projects? Well, we're, Goldman Sachs put us on the lowest uh, quartile, uh, they call the incentive price curve, and they identified 84 projects in the world that they considered to be next, should be next to go into production, mm -hmm. and then 44, 43 of them in South America were, were on, on both of those lists, of course, and then they identified, showed one, sev several aspects of why they like the various projects, but one thing they like about us is that we were at the very, not the bottom, but the lower quartile, and, and probably lowest eighth um, mm. of this incentive price of copper needed to go into production. The other thing is, is that it's a good jurisdiction. It's a very long-term Peru is a solid mining jurisdiction. Um, every major company in the world ha has been there or is there. And um, yeah. And also, I mean, you, you've, you've had some interest from some of the, the bigger companies as well. I, I mean, I believe Fortescue is a big shareholder of yours. Correct. Yes. They're up to 19.9% interest in our, our company now. They did two investments last year. Absolutely, and as you mentioned, I mean it's a it's a it's a huge project, um, and your market cap is only well, sort of sort of 50, 50, 60 million dollars at the moment. That's right. So as far as we're concerned, we're still just recovering the value we should we feel we should have for the work we've done and, and what we've proven about the project. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of the copper market, uh, what's your take on on how that's looking? The, the copper price is what about three sixty at the moment. Um, yes. And, and uh, lots of demand coming from 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 green uh, energy and things like that, Tesla and, and and all of these these wind farms and solar panels that they're, they're going to build. Um, you're going to need a lot of a lot of copper for that. Yes, uh, interestingly enough, Goldman Sachs report was was titled "Deficit Delayed, Not Denied," and that was actually October of 2018. 
And they were focusing a lot on development at that time and green energy, but really clearly the world is as uh, really an evolution is happening with, with everybody wanting green energy and, and really focusing on that. And you know what, where Tesla is and the rest of the world is on, on producing um, cars and, and machinery and everything that's using green energy. Um, mm. I mean, I don't want to go too much into what's happening in, in the States at the moment because it's sort of an unfolding story, but uh, it seems that, you know, that obviously yesterday uh, the Democrats won the Senate, which gives them control of the presidency, the Senate and the House. Um, so in terms of sort of, you know, the push on, on green energy in the States, nothing really to stand in the way there. No, I don't believe so. And, and the rest of the world too. I mean, it's a, I know the U.S. is very, very important to, to the world, but on the other hand, it's the rest of the world that knows what they want as well and, and has huge populations going that way. So both development in the third world countries and, and redevelopment in countries like the U.S. where a lot of their infrastructure is quite old. And then, and then as well, green energy. It's, just, it's a huge demand. Hmm. And in terms of further exploration and expansion potential, uh, you've got you've got two. Uh, there's the Kanyarako uh, Norte project, which is the, the main thing, and then you've got the the, the Kanyarako Sur and the Quebrada Verde. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing there. Sure. So what what it is geologically is within five kilometers, uh, a five kilometer structural trend. There are th what we believe to be three porphyry deposits. We focused mostly on Norte when we got there because we knew it already had 100 meters of 1%. So it's a great place to start trying to prove a deposit and find, find the best grades. So we concentrated on that, although we did step down to Kanyaraku Sur, a couple of drilling campaigns, and we've got about 15 holes into that. And we know it's a deposit. So let me step back here. And all the economic numbers that we talk about are all based on Norte alone. So sewer there is another deposit we don't know how big it is yet we don't know what grade it'll be we know there's no arsenic which is very good so it allows for blending on norte and then quebrada verde has no holes into it at all where i'm personally quite sure it's another deposit of some sort because of all the identi identifiers you know geochem and geophysics but also on surface over a very large area but also vertically in all the creek beds, you can see a lot of copper mineralization. So it's, it's actually there, but it needs holes before you can really call it a deposit. So we'd like to get into those two and see how much more copper we can put into this package with Norte before we finish feasibility and really understand the value of it. Mm, absolutely. So looking forward into, into 2021, uh, what, are, what are the next steps for the project? We're working on our permits, so drilling permits to complete geotech drilling um, on Norte and then the exploration drilling on Kanyaraku Sur and Verde, and also community permits. So we're working with the community, lots of programs there, and those would be the first two things. The other thing would do high be to do a high-level study on a smaller, higher-grade startup mm. so that people would understand what kind of options we have for development at Kanyaraku, the mm. whole project. Absolutely. And so in terms of that, 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 that study, when would you expect that some results to be, be out from that? We haven't contracted it yet. So we're, we're actually very lucky right now because of our rise in share price. We have a lot of warrants getting exercised. So it's an, an automatic financing mm -hmm. without having to put your hand out. And so once that, by the end of January, uh, a certain set of those will be, will be exercised. And then we could start um, contracting somebody to do that. We Some groups have already done some very high level work. Um, so we do have some ideas on that for a, a PEA. Mm. So sort of getting some getting some more cash into the coffers and then and then seeing what we can do, what you can do over the over the next year. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you touched on a little bit. Final question. Peru is a mining jurisdiction. Um, a lot of history there of, of mining. How's the how the politics there? How do they how do they compare with some of the chaos we're seeing elsewhere in the world? They're no different. <laughs> Nothing different at all. Um, I went to Peru in '94, and Fujimori was just getting the terrorists under control and getting international investment coming into the country. And he did a great job for some years, and then he got corrupt. And um, the mining law has, has not changed a lot. It's improved over the years since I first went there. Um, but it's a very solid law. The taxes are, are very clear. Um, so that's got a really good basis. Um, so there's, there's been good presidents and bad presidents since 94. And 
some of them do a great job for a while and then they fail or they just get, you know, whatever. It's really, honestly, after seeing what's going on in some countries lately, they're no different. <laughs> Um, you and but, your team have a lot, a lot of, lot of uh, experience in the country, obviously, having been there for, for so many years. That's right. Yeah. I mean, one thing I would say about Peru that does get a little frustrating is they don't have a civil servant. Um, they, don't have, they don't have civil servants. So your mines minister will change every time your president changes. And, mm. and then down the line, to a certain degree, a lot of the, the people will change in the various departments. So that can get very frustrating. Mm. Um, but, um, well, fantastic. Well, the the it's, you know, as I said, your your share price seems to be on on a, on a bit of a tear at the moment. Um, but it's but it's a huge a huge project for a for a small company to undertake. Uh, what is your, what are your plans? Do you think st strategically for the company uh, going forward? Well, we're explorers. That's our that's our real foundation. Um, and we certainly have enough engineering background within us. Not myself. I'm a geologist but to, to carry projects for it and know whether they're economic or not and hire the right people to do the work we've done to show the economics. Having said that, you know, we would not try to be raising $1.56 billion to build it. So better off we sell it to somebody for a price similar to what other people have sold these projects for, which is well above the 250 million mark at the right time. Absolutely. With a great amount of work done and, and uh, de-risking. Mm. Well, we look forward to hearing more about the project as uh, things unfold over the next year. Um, but, uh, you know, best of luck um, as you develop this, this very exciting uh, copper project. So thank you very much, Joanne, for joining us today. Okay, thanks very much.